officially call the meeting to order. Um, we're going to start with um, a moment of silence for our military. You know, we like to honor our military, especially living in Lakewood and serving all the students um, on JVLM. So after just a moment of silence, uh, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you want to stand. join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. I would say it's a lot more nerve wracking than the Pledge of Allegiance by yourself. You're like, <laughs> you know, don't speak here when it's just me. Okay. Um, and now we're going to go to uh, uh, the City of Lakewood at Council Remarks. And it looks like we have uh, Council Member Br uh, Mike Brandsetter. So if you want to share your updates with us. Well, <laughs> Thank you for having me tonight. I'm, uh, you know, it's my, uh, my pleasure to uh, speak to you on behalf of the City Council this evening. And even though we've, we've recently all uh, gotten together in two complete groups, uh, uh, that there, are, uh, there are a few things that I wanted to uh, pass on to you and, 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 and say. And first of all is uh, congratulations on uh, Getting your elementary school students back into uh, uh, it's, uh, a number of days of face-to-face uh, -face learning uh, going on now. Uh, that uh, city is glad to see that. The community is glad to see that, and the uh, the uh, police department is uh, glad to see the school zone. Speed limits are uh, there, needing to start do start doing some re-education of drivers to to make sure that we that we stay safe safe around those to do that. That uh, the um, wanted to um, comment on uh, when uh, we were we we're looking at that as and, and saw that that. Comcast had taken some actions for their their low income connectivity program to increase download and particularly to increase upload speeds. That should be a benefit to uh, uh, many in the community, but particularly to students that have been uh, <clears throat> relying upon that to uh, to to do that. And it'll it'll just make virtual learning. Um, both more effective and, and establish a, a modicum of equitability amongst the inter, of internet access among, among students. We're, we're glad to see that. The city is uh, put out to bid a, um, a major transportation project, which is the um, Gravelly Lake Drive section from Washington Boulevard down to the uh, the east end of Nyanza, uh, and uh, with those bids out in, in in early spring, hoping to begin construction there that will actually include a little bit of Washington Boulevard 
in the intersection at Interlochen in Washington is that uh, a year plus long project goes forth. Of most impact on the, on, on the district, that'll be in a time of when we're, we're really getting back to having schools going and that there's going to be a considerable amount of time uh, of when that section of Gravity Lake Drive is going to be closed and, and, and things will be detoured using primarily Nyanza Road to do that. Um, you know, I'm sure the public works folks and will be <clears throat> making sure that you're well aware of the timing and the scheduling of, 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 of those road closures. Um, but uh, and we'll, we'll deal with them as, as well as we have, I think, on, on the previous uh, major projects that, that, that we've done. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I was also glad that the, the, the city and other organizations uh, in, in the school district are uh, moving ahead with the mural project that's going to be created uh, by the, some students from Clover Park High School and is going to create a community asset of a transportable mural that celebrates the diversity of, uh, of, of, of a community and uh, provide some education about it. I think that's a, uh, uh, <clears throat> really a good piece of work that we're, that we're moving forward through, through, through to do. Um, that, um, and I think that then maybe, maybe one other thing that may, may be impacting, uh, the school district to, 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 to some extent is that uh, <clears throat> we, we are going to be reworking uh, this summer on Stillicum Boulevard, which will be in the, the, the Hutloff uh, um, in the Custer School area there where we did the street before, but we're going to go back and now do the sidewalks, which was not the ideal thing to have to disrupt traffic on that thing twice, but it had to do with the sequencing of when money arrived and the color of the money that, that, that would pay for things. So we're looking forward to going through to do that. And uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, it, in our very short term as a council, uh, we are working through the process to um, add a seventh council member for the remainder of this year so that we can can do that work. And we are scheduled to interview the 15 applications that we have both tomorrow and Wednesday evening. And I think that it is with the idea that we'll be able to take what we learn from those interviews and, uh, and, and, and make an appointment before the end of this month uh, and uh, perhaps er earlier rather than waiting all the way through to the end since we've uh, um, trying try, try to move through and we have uh, only one regular meeting left this month and I think we want to try to do it uh, by then. Um, I know I'm looking forward to it, and that will add another member to our joint team uh, to work to benefit the community. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm certainly willing to answer any questions, uh, confirm any rumors, or anything other questions that the, the board may have. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for the updates. Does anyone have any questions? doesn't look like there are any questions. So we really appreciate your time. Um, I'm sure if anyone does have one, they know where to find you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to stay in uh, have, uh, have a great rest of your meeting. I have to go on to one of my own. Yeah, sounds good. Have a great night. Take care. Um, 
All right. So next up is public comment, and we did not receive any um, by 530. So for those who are joining us um, with the virtual meetings, requests are submitted by 530, and then we read them um, at the meeting. But today we did not have any. So we are just going to go to the reports from the superintendent. So um, Ron, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Vice President Pearson. I'd like to start my uh, reports tonight with, it's kind of hard for me to get this right in view. Oh, there we go, problematic because of my backdrop. But we do have uh, WASDA certificates of excellence for each board director um, for the Board of Distinction for 2020 award. So I think I said last time that I appreciated being involved with a board that um, has worked really hard and continues to work really hard and is recognized by the state organization as such. Um, I also have two individual awards. One is to board president Marty Schaefer for 15 years of board service. And the other is to director Carol Jacobs for 25 years of board service. Thank you so much for putting in that time. It is now recognized officially. I would then move to my board report and speak to the return to in-person learning. As you are all aware, the district continues to follow its plan for returning to in-person learning. Families who chose to have their elementary students engage in our hybrid learning schedule were gradually phased back into in-person learning last week. Uh, this was done within the parameters and safety guidelines as outlined by the State Department of Health, Labor and Industries, as well as OSPI and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Families who chose to have their elementary students remain in virtual, uh, uh, in a virtual schedule were um, also given that opportunity and option and they continue as such. I was able to visit several schools last week and I got to tell you the sights and sounds of students in school were amazing. Um, I know I talked with other folks from my team that were out and about and, and uh, kids were greeted with smiles and they were welcomed and there were some tears on the parts of uh, folks that haven't seen the kids in so long. Um, so, you know, again, I've always said that no one wants the kiddos back in school more than than their teachers. Um, and so it, that was evident last week. And so we continue to um, operate this week in that hybrid model of instruction. Um, the district continues to monitor the COVID-19 infection rate data and the percent positivity trends. These have been trending downward. I believe we were at 331.9 per 100,000 today and an 8.9 positivity rate. So we are in that downward trend. And we'll be reviewing on February 19th, the data with respect to our target dates for secondary hybrid learning, which are set for early March. Um, with respect to virtual meetings of the board, um, the following is a direct read from the January 19th, 2021 WASDA updates on open public meetings. On January 15th, 2021, the legislature passed Senate Concurrent Resolution 8402, extending the governor's emergency proclamation, including Proclamation 20-28. So until the termination of the state of emergency pursuant to RCW 43.06.210, or until rescinded by gubernatorial or legislative action, whichever occurs first. And this means that in-person board meetings are not prohibited until the end of the declared emergency or further action by our legislature or governor. Regarding COVID-19 vaccinations, the process for vaccinations has been an ongoing saga as the state rolls out guidance and direction. The main variable seems to be the amount of vaccine that the state receives and distributes to various regions or entities for administration of shots in arms. The school district continues to investigate partnerships with local providers who are authorized to receive and administer vaccine for the purpose of supporting direct vaccinations to our staff when we reach phase two, excuse me, phase B tier two through four, which is that new 
chunk that the governor put together. So instead of waiting for two, three, and four, those will all be um, opened up at the same time. We have notified the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department um, that we stand ready to support any community vaccination efforts um, with use of our facilities. Um, the Tacoma, the health department has acknowledged receipt of that offer and to date they have not asked for any use of facilities. Regarding community and parent engagement, the district hosted its second Latinx family night on October, October on February 4th, 2021. There uh, were a variety of community partners present to support sharing information about um, school our school district, educational opportunities, and job training. The following community organizations took part in the event, uh, Clover Park Technical College, Pierce College, Pacific Lutheran University, Bates Voc Tech, West Pierce Fire Department, Lakewood Library, and several more. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Marco Viniegra, who's a teacher and principal intern at Harrison Prep, who was the MC for the evening, and all of the Clover Park School District uh, staff team and community partners who helped carry out this event. The district continues to be proactive in sharing information with parents on a variety of topics through virtual webinars, our YouTube channel, our website, and our social media accounts. Virtual parent academic, excuse me, academy nights um, aimed at high school juniors and seniors and their parents. Um, these topics um, were in January, going to college military style, and in February, finding your fit in choosing the right college for you. Hybrid learning presentations for parents for elementary students uh, took place on January 28th. Um, this was done in English and in Spanish, two separate uh, uh, webinars, and the recordings for these were also posted on our YouTube channel. The Lakewood Kiwanis Club provided donuts to the staff at the Student Service Center as a show of appreciation and support for the work that the district has done to support our students, family, staff, and community uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. Big thank yous to the Kiwanians. I just want you to know if we could get carrot sticks next time because I wasn't able to have any of those donuts. So maybe some carrot sticks or celery, please. Um, Regarding athletics, we um, are starting up athletics. The governor announced that our region has moved to phase two uh, of his most recent reopening schedule, and that has signaled the start of our athletic seasons for high school sports. All sports activities will follow the safety plans as developed within the guidance and parameters. Again, of this time, the WIAA, the Department of Health, Labor and Industries, OSPI, and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. The following sports are now in season football, boys and girls cross country, boys and girls golf, girls swimming, girls soccer, girls volleyball, and cheer. Due to the strict COVID-19 safety parameters set by the Pierce County League and out of an abundance of caution, spectators will not be allowed at the athletic events. The district is looking at uh, negotiating a potential plan that will safely allow parents of seniors to attend that last event known as senior night um, so that they don't miss out on that on that milestone with their children. Um, and the district is also working to secure an agreement to live stream home games through a third party service. Parents can sign up at a fraction of the cost as compared to the gate fee for attending each game in person. While we recognize the inconvenience to spectators, we're happy that we can focus our efforts on the students and providing them the opportunity to participate safely. Regarding student achievements in the district, uh, Beachwood Elementary students will be recognized by the City of Lakewood on February 16th at their City Council meeting uh, for their winning entries in the City's annual stormwater pollution uh, prevention calendar. Lakes High School student Brian Moore has received an appointment to the wet to West Point. Lakes High School student Amy Maselli was re the recipient of a four year Army ROTC scholarship to attend one of the following schools, uh, Texas Christian University, Texas A&M and UCLA. Several students are being awarded the PLU President Scholarship. This is one of the top academic and leadership scholarships offered by PLU. It's valued at $30,000 per year. From Clover Park High School, we have Yahaira Gonzalez Aparicio and Esther Ann, Esther Ann Soliai. From Harrison Prep School, we have 
Odalis Sanchez Sadio. Clover Park High School student Azalea Riviere. I think I said that correct. And if I did not, I certainly apologize and I'm open to correction. Is representing our community as the Boys and Girls Club of South Puget Sound Legacy of Hopes, Legacy of Hope Youth of the Year candidate. Um, this is always a great event. I love being able to attend that and I believe that will be virtual and we'll make sure that you get the um, information if you so choose to attend that. That concludes my report. However, we do have an update for the board on Project Lead the Way. So tonight we have a combined report on from career and college readiness as well as teaching and learning on this pilot that we've been running. Our presenters will be Diane Carver, Career and College Readiness Director, Rebecca Sprague, Career and College, college Readiness Supervisor, and Travis Campbell, Teaching and Learning Supervisor. With that, I would ask Carmen to bring those folks in and we can start on that presentation. All right, and I get to drive the screen. All right, here we go. I didn't go up there. I left someone out. There we go. Is it up there now? Yes. Okay. All right, so thank you, um, board. And um, Diane is gonna start us off here with the presentation and then um, Rebecca and Travis are gonna go back and forth on a couple slides. So they'll tell me when it's ready to do next. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. Perfect, thank you, Brian. Um, this current science adoption is a collaborative effort with career and technical education and teaching and learning. It was actually the 2018 Next Generation Science Standards and then the DODEA grant that paved the way for this new vision that's less teacher focused and more student centered with hands on projects and discovery learning. Uh, Project Lead the Way and Open Syed, which we'll talk more about in just a couple minutes, align with this vision in the Clover Park District. All middle school science teachers received professional development last summer for the Project Lead the Way unit called Design and Modeling. And this year, our sixth grade science teachers did a pilot with Design and Modeling during first semester. We've really seen some positive engagement and great input from the middle school science adoption team. They've helped choose the units from Project Lead the Way and Open Syed. And, um, that we'll, we'll be using moving forward. And Travis will give you an update on the team's progress shortly. And uh, next slide. So this was our original timeline, which started about a year ago with the introduction of Project Lead the Way. And some of the items early on we had to modify or eliminate due to COVID, but we are now on track to do the public review of the adoption materials in March and we have the final adoption will be ready for board approval in May. And now Rebecca Sprague will talk a little bit about Project Lead the Way. Thank you, Diane. So why Project Lead the Way? So in an effort to improve student achievement in the area of science, research suggests that teachers pose challenging problems to students in order to engage them in the learning. The problem-based learning opportunities in Project Lead the Way use driving questions that are meaningful to learners. The questions drive student exploration and sustain motivation across time. The projects result in artifacts that are concrete and answer the driving questions and culminate in a learning sequence. The vision of Project Lead the Way aligns with the next generation science standards that move away from the acquisition of disconnected science concepts and memorization procedures to a learning environment where students simultaneously develop disciplinary core ideas, science and engineering practices, and cross-cutting concepts in an effort to make sense of real-world phenomena and design solutions to problems. Next, please. So design and modeling um, was the first unit that we piloted this fall, which Diane referred to. 
all of our teachers grades six, seventh, and eighth were trained last summer so that they all had a foundational understanding of the first unit of Project Lead the Way. Um, there were some many positive outcomes reported. Um, kids and teachers coined the phrase, we're gonna MacGyver this during distance learning. So if you're an old school MacGyver fan, or apparently there's a new one out, I, don't, I haven't seen that one. Um, it really helped kids um, find ways to approach um, planning these projects and figuring things out on their own during distance learning. We provided kits um, to kids. Um, we distributed them. We delivered them. Um, kids picked them up. So they have materials, but there was a lot of problem solving um, going on amongst student groups on figuring out what could I use from home that I already have. And so just initially having kids engage in those um, brainstorming activities um, fostered some really unique problem solving skills. Project Lead the Way has some direct correlation and connection to the four pillars. Uh, lifelong learning is cultivated by instilling a desire to understand why things work or why they may not work. Collaboration is a key element of pro problem-based learning. Students have to learn to work together with others. Character is built while tackling projects that are rigorous, require persistence, determination, and reflection. And leadership during teamwork is needed. If something doesn't work, someone has to find a way to lead and motivate the team to make revisions and try again. The picture on the left is an example of one of the, the first um, design problems students have to come up with. They have to create and build an ankle foot orthesis prototype. So they're given a case study and this is an example of what um, one student um, developed. Um, there are many creative projects, so much so that one teacher reported that kids were dropping them off the, at school because they th thought they needed to see them in person. So that was pretty exciting. Next slide, please. Again, a key concept um, to making sure that we move forward in teaching kids um, in ways that they learn best is teacher training. All teachers, again, um, they were trained in the first unit of design and modeling in June of 2020. And in June of 2021, all middle school science teachers will be trained in the next unit, which is called green architecture. There will be continued trainings throughout um, each summer um, through 2026 until we reach full imp implementation, excuse me, and 26-27. Once full implementation is reached, two units will be designated at each grade level of Project Lead the Way. Thank you. Travis, can't, oh, nope, back to Diane. Thanks, Rebecca. Part of this adoption process involves helping the middle school science teachers obtain CTE certification. This will ensure that leadership and career focused elements are embedded in the middle school science curriculum. Also, because of the state CTE enhanced funds, the district will be able to provide all students with the supplies and equipment needed to support the hands-on lessons and activities. Obtaining a CTE certification requires teachers to complete a CTE certification program at Bates Technical College. And we are working with Bates to allow our teachers to take all the required classes either online or on our district campus once we're able to meet face-to-face -face again. Uh, our teachers will begin this process as a cohort in the summer of 2021, so this coming summer. And now here is Travis Campbell to talk about Open Sci Ed. Good evening, Superintendent Banner and members of the board. Um, my part here is to discuss the other half of our middle school science adoption. I'm very proud to present on something called Open Sci Ed, which is actually an open educational resource. Um, it's free in terms of the uh, material is, is available online at no cost, um, and it is high quality um, vetted material. And so I'm gonna go into some detail about the why behind our current um, investigation of OpenSciEd. 
Um, OpenSci Ed is uh, developed by a nonprofit organization bringing together educators and organizations, curriculum developers, and professional development providers to improve science education through high quality, freely available instructional materials. We're encouraged through our own policy in Clover Park School District um, to investigate open educational resources as one of our processes in looking at materials that are available out there. Open SciEd units are vetted, as I had said, using a high quality, independent, third party experts using a nationally respected quality rubric and criteria. Open SciEd is the only open educational resource that has all of the current units reviewed and passed using the highest review standards. It's fully online and it has been adapted for remote and hybrid instruction. It includes hands-on investigation similar to Project Lead the Way, STEM labs where students test their ideas and, and uh, using science and engineering practices. Next slide. This may be slightly difficult to see, um, but it shows kind of the journey, if you will, the learning journey, the roadmap to implementing um, Open Sci-Ed. Um, like Project Lead the Way, as Rebecca shared, Open Sciad uses an inquiry approach to learning that is anchored in a phenomenon in the natural or designed world. The phenomenon is derived from an observed shared experience of people, and students then develop questions on a driving questions board and navigate them using the scientific method, a routine where and what to explore using an investigative approach, using data to explain um, what they are learning. Students put the pieces of data together and listen to one another's ideas and sense make to form a consensus. New questions likely emerge through the process of investigation and students, um, as students explore and additional problems might be identified and iterated upon. Um, Open Syed supports the four pillars similar to um, Project Lead the Way in terms of encouraging lifelong learning. The journey really never ends um, through collaboration and student thought leadership that develops character and an appetite to have all voices at the table in sense making the natural and designed world around us. Next slide. Um, similar to Project Lead the Way, there will be a training and implementation um, professional development plan in place um, where we will be uh, metering in um, units from Open Syed that the, uh, the teachers who are on the adoption committee are identifying um, and, and uh, putting through the process uh, currently. And we will plan to use our professional development days in Junes and Augusts and so forth to help equip teachers with the uh, proper amount of training um, to continue the implementation process over time and in concert with Project Lead the Way. Lots of, in general, more hands-on student-driven um, scientific inquiry um, and we're really excited about um, these prospects. And I think that's the word to the next slide. And Brian. Right, so we're open to any questions that you might have. <laughs> oh, there's so many hands, I can't figure out which word to go. All right, Carol, I'll start with you. And then... you're, you're muted, Carol. Well, maybe we'll go to Paul while Carol's working on her mic. So I'm up? Yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, nice presentation. Uh, you know, when you look at the board of directors and stuff from uh, Open Syed, uh, pretty, pretty distinguished group of people, and there's some very interesting things. One of their core values is, is teachers and students need equitable and exciting learning experiences. How, how, how we, since equity is one of the things we talk about, how are you gonna do this equitable, exciting learning experience? I can take that. Or... 
Brian? Sure, Travis. Well, at the heart of open sci ed is um, really tapping student voice. And so um, rather than beginning with um, a scientific principle and uh, having the content drive the learning, the learning is driven by the students' experiences and their curiosity about the natural world. So it begins with what they know about the scientific phenomenon that they are observing. And then it goes to questions where students pose the questions that they're curious about. And, and so bringing that student voice and student experience, whether it's through um, citizen science, citizen science um, or doing, doing chemistry at home and in the kitchen um, with what's available. Uh, it's really about meeting the students where they are and um, allowing the learning experience to be guided by their own curiosity. And that for many um, helps to uh, include that student voice and perspective in the class. So, okay, uh, I, I, that makes sense. I, th I think there's some real value to that. I mean, it's, you know, as I look back at some of the books I read about Thomas Edison, you know, he was <laughs> an experimenter from the get go and came up with some very interesting ideas in, uh, made that work you know when you look back at newton you know uh and and some of those people you know way back that that's kind of how they learned they saw things and say hey you know why is it this way mm -hmm. so i think that's good now the, the the other piece that i'm interested in is you know our science scores on our testing mm -hmm. haven't been so good so we have learning standards so if you're going to allow students to um kind of map their own path, how do you make sure you catch the standards? That's it. So I can take that, Brian, if you'd like. Sure. So um, all of Project Lead the Way and Open Syed, um, they align with the next generation science standards. So um, everything's through teacher guided practice, right? So it's not necessarily that students are just let go to investigate with no core concepts presented and those kind of things. It gives them the opportunity though to connect meaning to their learning. So mm -hmm. if I'm gonna if I'm gonna build this foot orth thesis, I have something to hang my concept knowledge on. So it really gives kids an opportunity to not just take a lecture or not just watch a a, a video or look at a PowerPoint. It gives them an additional opportunity to connect to their learning. So to encourage them to find other pathways to take something apart and investigate it. So their own learning becomes intrinsic versus just everything being given to them. Okay, I, I, that makes sense to me. And, and I think very valuable. I, I, I had the opportunity, you know, a, a by the way story a, to go to test pilot school and you know, you get the professor standing up there and they start teaching about fugoids. And so you look at the math of a fugoid and you go, wow, man, this is amazing. But it didn't make sense to me until I got in an airplane and demonstrated it myself and go, wow, this is pretty interesting where the angle of attack stayed constant on an airplane, even though it was going straight up sometimes and straight down. And you just went hands off, you just ride in this airplane, you go, wow, this is amazing. I didn't realize this airplane had a, a fugoid mode to it and it did. And uh, so, to me, that was great learning, and thank you for those answers. Carol? Um, I have a couple questions. One, I am really excited about the fact that um, the certification, the CTE possibility for certification for teachers. I, I'm really excited because we know that as, that as they receive that certification, how they will implement CTE principles and theologies with, um, with their kids. So I'm really excited for that. How long will it take? What kind of a... Um, course how long will the course be for teachers to receive that CTE certification and I can take that one Brian yep. so we actually in our working with Bates Technical College we were able to waive many of those courses because all of these teachers have a teaching background and so that was that was nice right. 
about half of the courses we were able to waive. And so we anticipate, and we, we still have some more work to do. We want some input from the teachers as far as the pacing. We're gonna start this summer with one course, and then we'll work with the teachers and see if they wanna do two courses in a, in a year or just one or stick with summers. And so there's a little bit of, of work that we can do there, but they should be finished with the program within probably two or three years. And it could be shorter than that, depending on what we decide to do moving forward. Well, I'm really excited for that. I know that we, as a board, we also look um, when we're evaluating our superintendent about CTE, the curriculum. And I know that this will certainly enhance that. So I think this is any way we can increase CTE, increase student achievement. I'm just excited about it. Um, I have a question on the open science ed, and I hope this is um, not too difficult. Um, on the open side, the um, path that there was here, what kind of projects can you, can, as a middle school student, what would a, is there any, can you give me an example of what a student would be doing? And I'm going to preface it with this. I am, I've always the biggest advocate for our science fairs, and it always excites me to see what the students create and develop and show and they stand up and they show their work. So I look at this as an additional to a hands on learning. So I'm really going to miss that science fair this year. I look forward to it next year and maybe some of this will be a part of it. But what kind of projects would a is student based here? Travis? If you can, if you can respond, I mean. Absolutely. Um, so each each of the um, units has an associated um, hands on lab or investigation that goes along with um, whatever the concepts are that are being learned. Um, they, they range from um, uh, producing something that tests the effects of gravity on, um, on motion and Newton's third law uh, to uh, a variety of, of different life science um, activities where students will go and, for example, um, conduct some investigation in, on, on local natives and ally um, plants, looking at plant and animal structure. Um, so what I like about Open Syed is, is it um, for, for very little, and I was speaking with a, a teacher today who works at Fur Firwood, um, and they're doing um, uh, a piece, a, a unit on climate science. Um, and those students, uh, she she uh, kindly said that that the material that they use in the um, hands-on labs are Firwood friendly, <laughs> and and so the students there enjoy um, the the hands-on uh, experience of. Um, testing various uh, scientific principles. Um, and so we, we're excited to have it be more about that rather than the filling in the blanks in, yeah. um, in, in, in those consumable, very expensive um, uh, workbooks. And so that's, that's one of the pieces that we know that uh, teachers that have piloted it have spoken very positively to is that it's more about doing the science rather than having the science done to them. So it's all project-based then? It is. It is. And Carol, much of what you see at the science um, fair, uh, that type of application of the scientific process mm -hmm. is exactly right. what the students are doing in an iterative okay. way within okay. Open Sci Ed. I so appreciate the question. During, well, during the course of like a semester, um, and I know that these projects are certainly tied to the standards, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that they'll be able to use this um, with interdisciplines. How long, how, during a semester, let's say, how many projects would we expect a student to attempt or complete? Is there a, a rubric for what the expectations are? Yeah, for each. So we're, we're currently scoping per quarter at the middle school. Quarter. Um, one open SIED um, major unit. And then um, within that unit, there are several um, sub, they're very robust. And in fact, the teachers that are doing the analysis of the, of the, the, the larger units are seeing how they're going to have to be, um, they're gonna have to 
select ones that they decide are essential and important based on the standards and based on our historical um, test data uh, to Paul's question. Um, they're mapping what, what, what types of units that we have that um, assist us in developing student um, gaps in learning based on the standards. Um, so they, they could be expected to, to answer your question, Carol, to have maybe between four to six small projects yes. with a culminating project at the end of each unit. Okay. Now, did you say that the materials for this were being provided? Well, that's part of the exploration of the adoption committee. So the units okay. that we have to, yes, they will be provided. It's that we need to select the units and then identify the projects that we'll be doing and using those manipulatives. So well, that's project. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to just say with Project Lead the Way, um, those materials are provided. Yep. Okay. And, and, and so with each unit, um, then we distribute to the schools. If, the, if it was in-person learning, there would be kits for students and groups. Yeah. Um, in our pilot, we did individual kits and sent them home to kids. And then they did some MacGyver outsourcing as well. Okay. Last question then. If this is an incredibly, let's say this is, we know this is going to be successful and let's say it's very, very successful beyond you what we planned on for middle school. Might this be a program that could be immersed into some el older elementary kids or into a science, a high school curriculum? Yes. Um, in fact, the next, or for the Open Syed, I'll speak to the Open Syed piece because I know it's a little different with Project Lead the Way. Um, Open Syed's next, um, Next Horizon is high school. They're already developing a ninth grade um, piece. And I know that after speaking with the open side representatives, um, they fully expect to build out biology, chemistry, and physics wow. with, a, with a life science and a physical science somewhere there. And then their last um, units that they're going to be building out are, are intermediate elementary. But as you well know, we have um, recently adopted our TCI science curriculum and are um, really uh, leaning into uh, the, the implementation of our new science curriculum across the system. But definitely at some point down the road, it may be an option to supplement the learning with. Right. Well, thank you very much because I personally am a very tactile learning and I maybe my science lessons might not have been difficult if I would have been able to create something as opposed to just sit and figure out workbooks. So I'm excited for this. Thank you very much. Melissa? I too am excited about this. Actually, I just realized that during my school visit right before COVID, I actually went into a classroom that was doing Project Lead the Way and they were making the boots. And I'm also yep. married to a civil engineer. Yay. And I will say, I don't remember doing anything like this growing up. And I mean, they had the engineer graphing paper, which is about my house. I have no idea what to do with it. So I'm just, I'm very excited for these students. Like, you know, I just feel like so many more opportunities will come from it. And they won't be like me if they marry someone who's an engineer. Maybe they'll know a little bit more um, about it than I do. I'm sorry if you can hear my toddler. He's having a toddler tantrum before uh, bedtime, so I apologize. Um, I did have one question on the implementation. Obviously, it's a very extensive um, program. You know, I did witness it. It was a very exciting classroom to be in. Is this one of the longer implementations that you've seen? Because, you know, when I say see 2025, 2026, I'm like, will, I mean, will things have changed by then? Like, you know, I just, it just seems like a rather long implementation um, process, but like, I'm sorry, I'm going to mute myself in a second. <laughs> um, I was just wondering if, the, if this is one of the longer um, implementation processes that you've seen. It is, but Project Lead the Way has been around for a long time. So it was a little bit about us figuring out how we could get into the process of adopting it. Um, we've talked about this, uh, I don't know, I've talked to different teaching and le learning supervisors over the years. Maybe it's been close to 10 years for me about how do we get this moving um, and kind of the connection to career and technical education. Um, we're in a middle school science adoption right now for this school year. It's allowing us to launch um, the process. But yes, it's one of our longer implementations. 
Um, but I think it's going to pay off in the long run because this is backed by a lot of um, large science agencies across the nation. Uh, there's a lot of professional development around it. There's a lot of research behind it. Um, and again, like you were mentioning, it has, as everyone has mentioned, it's hands-on and it, it connects you to the standard. But Rebecca, if you had something else you want to add. Um, I just think that I had the opportunity to um, uh, go to a school, two schools, one in California, and I think the other one was in New Mexico, um, and talk to teachers who've been teaching this over a course of years. And I, one fellow was super interesting. And so I reached out to him via email and asked him how long it took their district to implement to the full extent that they were. And it took them five years. And I mean, it was incredible. And then they interviewed kids and what it does in launching kids into careers and interest levels as they get into high school. And so I see it as a clear connection for giving kids, you know, a glimpse at what a pathway or a career and some of these different things that they may not even consider they're good at or interested in um, unless they have the opportunity and what better time than middle school. Um, because if we don't catch our middle schoolers and get them engaged and get them excited about what they could do in the future, it's kind of too late when they're sophomores and juniors in high school because all they want to do is just get out. So we have to help them find a way to be super excited about something beyond high school. And, you know, I just, I was just so impressed about the work. And yes, it's a time commitment, but teaching anything well to kids takes training. And so we need to afford our teachers the opportunity to do it well. And that's through these summer trainings. So that's just my bit, but it's pretty exciting when you see what the outcome can be. Yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. So thank you. Can I just add to that? What you just said, Rebecca, also goes to Paul's question about equity. When we have kids that will not get these experiences mm -hmm. for whatever reason, but we're going to provide those to those kiddos at school. And as they progress through school, they will be able to engage. Their engagement levels will go up because they are going to build that background interest level that they can apply to anything. So thank you very much for what you just what you just stated and everybody. Paul, did you have another question? Yes, Brian, thank you. Two, two follow-up ones. Um, what Do we have any idea what our cost to the district is to put this in place? Have we looked at any numbers? Like one of the thing, responsibilities of the board is, you know, managing finances. And so what, what, what are your thoughts there? Well, a lot of the Project Lead the Way costs are the um, training, is the training. So training all the staff. Um, open SIAD is free. Um, but again, it goes back to training of staff. Um, there are some yearly supplies that once you start adopting the different units, um, but um, current technical ed is a way for us to help fund um, that. So through the enhancement dollars, we can fund the supplies that are ongoing for Project Lead the Way. It wasn't until that Diane and I had put all that connection together that we went, oh, we could actually fund this in the future, right? Keep this going. So that's um, was a connection between teaching and learning funds, which help us adopt and train teachers, right? But then also the current technical ed is it allowing us to enhance uh, the supplies we buy. You're not really buying textbooks with this, right? You're not really buying a $135 each student um, textbook or a bunch of workbooks that we have for seven years. It's, it's not that kind of adoption. It's more about um, the curriculum and the PD that we're going to use. You've been asking about this for a long time, I think. Why, why aren't we doing more of this um, open ed science stuff? So um, this is the direction we're headed where there's less textbook and more hands-on approach. Rebecca? Um, one other thing that we found during the distance learning was there's a lot of resources for free online. And I think you referred to that um, engineering graph paper. I found that online. And it's actually kids can interact with it online and don't have to have a physical piece of paper. Um, also, one of the great things about Project Lead the Way is they built a partnership with different groups and like kids learn to use what's called Tinkercad, which I think is pretty cool. They build things within these computer programs. So distance learning taught us a couple of things. One, there are a lot of free resources out there. And two, 
we can teach kids to use these things online that will they'll transfer into career use. So um, there were all kinds of new learnings for us. And to speak to the equity piece, one of the things that was so exciting for me was I had a teacher say how much more engaged their ELL students were, because mm -hmm. even though there might be the, the contextual language barrier, they were able to engage in the learning because they were able to project base their learning. So that was super exciting for me, me as well. So that was another really exciting piece of feedback. So I just wanted to add, there's a lot of free stuff out there and we're finding them. Well, and we're focusing our um, 2018 DODIA grant on the implementation side of this, which is really where um, the uh, standards-based NGSS um, uh, work with teachers is going to be funded through um, th through that uh, fund source as well. Okay, and, and my second question, follow-up question, is. Um, you know, if you if you look at the data out there, our science numbers for our district and across the state aren't anything to write home about, right? Yeah, you know, it's a little frustrating. Um, so you're, you're, I'm feeling the excitement from all of the presenters here that you think this might be a good answer for that problem. And wh when, when do you think we'll see the curve change to positive numbers? What are your well, thoughts? Well, increased numbers. Yes. I think one of the things that you saw in the presentation was a direct connection and crosswalk to the four pillars of student success. And again, while we don't ignore what the um, standardized testing is gonna say, I think what this does, and, and I'm just gonna precede and you guys can fill in the blanks in terms of directly answering the question, but one of the one of the main components of this is that it, it um, builds the comprehensive student in terms of lifelong learning, collaboration, character, and leadership. And, um, you know, again, we believe that when we attend to those things that we are gonna see those, those outcomes that you're talking about. Um, so very intentional that we're working with those students on the four pillars and building that, um, that those, those skill sets that will transfer not just into science scores, but into the, 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 the global citizenship that you, you know, we talked about, you can apply this to, to quote unquote anything. Um, Brian, rest of the team, feel free to chime in on that. Well, Project Lead the Way focuses on teamwork and like Ron said, building that whole student. And so with other districts that we've worked with and talked to who've done this kind of implementation, they have seen growth across the board. So not just in their science scores, but in, in other scores and in student uh, engagement. So we're, um, we're hoping that that will be the result for us as well. Pretty confident that it will be. And the next generation science standards are really trying to push us away from that isolated learning um, and to really try and um, get us to, to motivate students, um, not just with those disconnected science concepts that they memorize, but actually through simulation and activation and analysis and impl you know, implementing their learning. So um, what we're currently doing obviously isn't working. So um, we got to find something else, right? And um, this, I think, is a really great opportunity for kids in more than just science. It opens up so many opportunities. Okay, thank you. Well, that concludes our report. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And then Alyssa, I think this is where we were so strategic because we did some project-based learning and we knew that your son would be a little bit restless about it this time and when he's going to bed. So that's when she was going to turn it back over to me. So man, she's right on the spot there with that. We're going to just say thank you, uh, Ron Banner, to your team. Fantastic. I also want to acknowledge, you know, some of the focus on science has been um, more recent, you know, in terms of the testing and the requirements, next gen, these, the standards. And so there's uh, part of that history needs to be understood when you look at science scores as well. And so while there originally was a large focus on uh, 
uh, English and on math. Um, and that those were heavily scrutinized. Science was kind of a, uh, a second thought. And as of late, it's been rightly understood in a you know, holistic um, perspective of impacting those other things too. So I can appreciate it, but I don't want us to think that everything that we've done up to this point has been failing. It's the focus from the state and other areas hasn't. Uh, probably elevated science to the important level that it's at. And I really do appreciate what you said, Superintendent Banner, about it aligning with our four pillars, because what our four pillars is doing is looking at the whole child. And I really loved the report because they also acknowledge that this isn't just critical thinking skills, but it's collaborative problem solving. And when we create students who can do that, our students are going to be in a position to excel. And so thank you very much, great report. We're now gonna to move to our consent agenda. And um, I am going to acknowledge that there were corrections, they were sent out in time. So um, there weren't any additional comments to the corrections. So uh, we're able to leave them in the consent agenda. So Paul, thank you for your insights and um, Proofing of those, we accepted the, those corrections that you suggested were. Uh, Do we get a chance to discuss those things? I think there needs to be some discussion on those, Marty. Well, then, uh, if that is what you wish, then we, we could pull the meeting uh, notes off of the consent agenda item. And so, you know, you would make a motion for that. So, the normal protocol you did follow up to this point, which was, I like, you know, every every week we get them, we're able to look at them, suggest changes, the whole board can look at them, they're either in agreement or not. We were in agreement. And so that's the comment I think that needed to be made. So what other comment than that would you want made? Well, the, um, I, I guess, well, several things. I would, I would just, we can go through all of them as we go through there were more cha there were more changes than what I made that were made in the notes that came out, so I, I don't know who else added things. Somebody other than me. Um, but the, the 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 one thing th that I'm concerned about is the one. Uh, let's see. Let me get the right spot here. We we last meeting. We pulled off the the minutes from the fourteenth and twenty first, and and the problem with those minutes um, that got passed on is that every board member's comments were listed in there except mine. Um, that's frustrating to me, um, and so I'm just you know they're they're approved now. They got approved last meeting. Um, but my comments were not included. And, and when you look at it, that, that meeting on the 21st was to follow up the meeting of the 14th, which uh, you know, brought me into question. And then the 21st meeting was to specifically a special meeting to talk about um, Paul Wagaman's comments at the 14th meeting. I was asked to speak first, which I asked not to be asked or not first, None of that was put in those minutes, nor were my comments put into the 21st meeting. So that's a problem for me. And I don't know if it's a problem for you, but it may be a problem for transparency of how this board operates. Yeah, so my understanding of those two minutes that you're mentioning, those had nothing to do with the minutes for the consent agenda for tonight. And so those were dealt with, they were dealt with, um, You'd asked, you had made questions, you'd asked questions about those from this December, and they were addressed and voted on and approved. So that that section, I think, has already been addressed. Then you also looked, uh, and I wouldn't agree with everything you just said, and that's fine, but we can go back and and, and discuss that more if we need to. And then the other piece is that. Um, as far as the procedures that we have in place, if an individual does not feel good about the 
meeting, the notes for the meetings, as a board director, we have a right to be able to say, hey, this is, you know, we're concerned or we'd like it to be changed. Or we, you know, this is an area that I think would bring greater clarification. That's certainly understandable. And we allowed that to happen. You made your uh, comments today. They were included and resent out. If you're looking at the ones that have been resent and you, and you still aren't comfortable with them, then you would have the right at that point to say, I'd like to have those uh, removed from the consent agenda and move over to the individual action item. The rest of us, it was sent out. Nobody else uh, came back and said, yeah, I, uh, we have any concerns with the uh, you know, additions that were made. So, I mean, that's just the protocol that we've always had. And so um, you're looking at it you said there were additions that were made. As you read it, are you still concerned about any of the uh, well, uh, notations in the meeting? My, my problem, my problem with the 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 follow up um, minutes that where the corrections were made. Um, I worked on those early this morning. I I didn't show up at my computer until a few minutes before, so I haven't I haven't looked at every change in all those pages i haven't and so um that's why i thought we we're going to go through and look at them and you know maybe discuss it as a group so no we wouldn't we would not go through everything of a mean paul that's why we have agenda reviews that's why we give it to you in advance and so what we can do uh is start sending the agenda reviews moving them back further uh you know, so most of us will look at him, and I'm assuming you're reading your board briefs. I'm assuming that you're doing that over the weekend or before um, and not having to do it the last day to where then you don't feel like you have time to make corrections. Well, the changes, the changes came out sometime this afternoon. I don't know exactly when they came out because I was on the job all day working. Yeah, when, and... when did you request the changes be made, Paul? I, I requested the changes, I think it was Saturday. Yeah. And so if we were able to do it, I mean, sooner, that would be helpful. But well, then, okay. yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just acknowledging that that's the way it works. And so what I, I've already talked with Superintendent Banner, and we're going to look at uh, in my weekly meeting with him, of even pushing agenda reviews further back uh, to give every, you know, everybody more time than just a weekend. Because right now it is kind of tight, even though we've operated that way for a long time. Uh, we can, I mean, we've operated that way for as long as I've been on the board, but um, I think that there's merit to having more time uh, to be able to make sure that we don't have to do things uh, at the last minute. But I, I wouldn't want to use a public board meeting to read every word in a minute. That's certainly not the way, that's not the, the intention or the design of how we approve minutes. That's why we have had them in the consent agenda and that's why we read them in advance. So anyway, the uh, opportunity. But, so, but but that process and what I'm trying to point out is that the minutes that got approved at last meeting for the uh, the, the 14th and 21st meeting are still, in, in, in my opinion, flawed. So, you know, how do we fix those problems? That's the question. Well, I, if I remember correctly, the board approved those minutes and so they did, they did. yeah i voted no because they're they're not correct my comments were not included yeah and paul i you know your your voice is a voice that is heard the we're a team uh that's how a board works the rest of us aren't in agreement with your assessment of the way that it went and so they they, us being the board, did not have the same desire to have the outcome that you wanted. You didn't win that one. And so that's why it went that way. I'd... Well, I, I thought minutes were supposed to reflect what happened at a meeting. I, that's to me what minutes should do. And, and just in transparency to our community, I think they should be included. And, uh, you know, if that's what we choose not to, then it certainly looks like we're not very transparent as a board. No, the, me the meeting notes, now you're making accusations. The meeting notes are, are 
a overview of what took place. They don't, they're not required to be verbatim. We went over all this before. And you have an opportunity to bring this up in agenda review too. And those things have happened. And now we're bringing them up in a, a meeting that is not designed to go over the details of the minutes because of the fact that uh, it didn't recall the things that you wanted recalled. What we could do in that case, if that still concerns you, is ask for us to have a workshop and we could create a workshop so to make sure that the board has a voice to circle back again and review the way that we want to do minutes. We could do that. I think that would be a fair way. But to sit here and say that it's, it's not transparent because it didn't recall the things the way that you wanted them recalled, I'm not able to agree with that. And I just don't want to have a public meeting that states uh, that I did not respond to that comment that you just made. And it's unfortunate. Any, any other people want to comment on the process of minutes before we um, move forward? So we've got Alyssa's hand up and then I saw Carol's as well. I, mean, I just want to say, I mean, I get, I, I get your concerns, Paul. I, along the same lines as Marty, like we voted on this last week. I get the, or not last week, last meeting, I'm losing my sense of time. Um, so, I mean, moving forward, I definitely agree that we, if we want meeting minutes done a certain way, like we should definitely talk about it. Um, I think that that was already approved though. So it's not like you're gonna go back and change it again. But I agree that moving the agenda reviews up would certainly be helpful. Mine are usually on Fridays and then like, of course, our meetings on Monday. Um, so I totally agree with that. Um, and I just think it's important to remember that it is like an overview of what happened, not word for word what happened. And plus the meetings are all, all public, so they could definitely get public and get that information. But um, but I would agree that, I mean, if we wanted to, I'm all for being more transparent. I've always said that. Um, so if there's a better way to do it, then we should all work together. But I definitely don't think that consent agenda is Thank you. And then, I mean, uh, Carol, I noticed you had your hand up as well. Um, two things. One, as far as, you know, I've never had this much discussion during consent agenda. I just kind of want to throw that out there, but I think this is important. And um, as far as moving our agenda meetings, like I had mine on Thursday. And if we do move them back, I would suggest maybe having them completed by Thursday or Wednesday. Um, any more than that, then we're more than a week out. And I think that's getting too far away from the actual meeting time. So I'm hoping that, like I had mine Thursday, I had plenty of time to go through my stuff. Alyssa, you had yours Friday. I could see where you might've been, you know, a little short, especially if you had anything else going on that day. So, you know, um, if, if, we, if we talk about having all agendas done by Thursday, Wednesday at best, I really wouldn't wanna move it back past Wednesday. Um, I just think that's getting too far from actual meeting date. And as we approved them, yes, Paul did not accept the approval of the minutes last time, the rest of us did. So that does warrant a very different, con a different conversation, not during this consent agenda, because that's already passed approved. So we're kind of bringing up something we really can't do anything about it because they've been approved. And for that, we need to move forward. We're now on last month's meeting not the December meetings, to be talking about December meetings when we've already approved and we would either have to go and undo that. And I don't even think that's legal or right. Um, we need to stay back on track for January approval meetings. Um, we approved them once. There's nothing, I don't think we have any backtracking that we can do on it. I think we have to move on. So Paul, you were able to get, Just saying. get your concerns shared and I can appreciate that. Um, we're now at a point to where we are at the uh, place of moving forward with our consent agenda, agenda which would be items 21-076 all the way to 21-083. And so at this point, I would uh, ask if there is a motion for the consent agenda items. If you, so if you'd raise your hand, so Carol, 
made seconded by Anthony. All those in favor, please raise your right hand so I can see. And just for record, four of us have raised our hand and then those opposed may raise their hand. And so then Direct Wegman is opposed, but the consent agenda items carry four to one. We will now move forward to our individual action items. The first individual action item is one that I know that we're aware of. It's been brought up um, to us, not only in our agenda reviews, but we've been looking at this for quite some time in terms of the America Cares funding. And now it's come down to 21-084, which is the acceptance of the governor's emergency education relief or GEAR funds. Is there a motion for 21-084? Motion has been made by Paul. Is there a second? Seconded by Alyssa. And then uh, Superintendent Banner, would you speak to this uh, individual action item, please? Sorry, I think Carol and I went to the same <laughs> school of unmuting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, President Saver. Yes, um, on December 14th, 2020, the board approved the purchase of 1,115 Dell laptop computers in accordance with our eligibility for funding based on reimbursement from the Governor's Emergency Education Relief Fund. The reimbursement has been allocated and the resolution, this resolution authorizes the district to accept the reimbursement related to this purchase. I recommend approval of this action. Board, any questions or comments for the superintendent? Paul. Yeah, um, at, at our agenda review, we discussed this and it, it appears that what, what we could have done is the resolution that came out to begin with could have I'll, had this piece put into it. And I think uh, what uh, the superintendent shared with us at our agenda review that, that they will probably implement that in the future to save us the, the repetitiveness of, of some of this stuff. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yes, Ron, I, again, thank you for the opportunity. We have an agenda review and it's good for the public to know that these aren't things that we just see that um, we are given opportunity to look into them to ask questions of the district and the superintendent prior to the meeting. All right, no further questions. All those in favor, please raise your right hand and the motion uh, passes unanimously. We're now looking at individual action item 21-085, which is a purchase recommendation for the furniture and, and equipment for our brand new Dr. Claudia Thomas Middle School classroom edition. Is there a motion? Made also by Paul Wegman, seconded by Anthony. And then Superintendent Banner, again, would you speak to this motion, please? Yes, so just as a brief reminder, uh, after the original planning and construction began on Thomas Middle School, there was a projected increase to student enrollment from Joint Base Lewis McCord North based on confirmed construction plans for additional family housing. The board approved six additional classrooms in the form of modular buildings on this site. Uh, approval of this action item authorizes the district to purchase classroom furniture and equipment for Claudia Thomas Middle School's six additional classrooms. This will be done through the district's membership with King County Directors Association, affectionately known as KCDA, which provides furniture and equipment solutions through the bid process in compliance with RCW 28A-335-190. The funding for this will come from our capital project budget, and I do re recommend approval of this action. Thank you. Board, are there any questions you have from 21-085? Alyssa. Not as much as a question, but just to go off what um, Ron said, I think it's important to realize that they're modular buildings. I There's a lot of word on the street like, oh, portables. Um, and I, they're not your traditional portable that you have um, in your mind. They're beautiful. They match the building. There have been quite a few meetings on it that people can get more information. But I just think it's really important to mention that because I have seen um, portables thrown around a few times and it's definitely not the traditional portable. Thank you. Paul. 
I, I think uh, I appreciate Alyssa's comment there. I think there's probably another comment that needs to be made is, you know, this is still done under budget, you know, in budget, and uh, it didn't cost the community. I mean, it all cost us, but I mean, we didn't go out, for, you know, bond and all those kind of things. So that's very encouraging. The other thing is, is, you know, when we um, did Four Heroes and that school over there, all of a sudden the demographics changed on us after we did a demographic study and we had to do some boundary line adjustments. And so we, we were very fortunate that we were able to add capacity to this uh, site and, uh, you know, it just saves the inconvenience to our community of doing boundary adjustments. So I, I, th I think this was, uh, we were very fortunate how this all came together as far as the, the budget and all those kind of things. So I'm very encouraged. So thanks very much, uh, you know, Ron and your team. Yeah, I, I would uh, say that it was great stewardship on behalf of the district. And so great job on your team for sure. All right, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. And motion carries unanimously as well. I'll now remind the board that we're at uh, that place of reminding you for uh, of first readings. Right. And, and so you'll want to make sure that you've been apprised with those and are aware of them. If you have any questions that you can uh, ask the superintendent of as well on those. We will have an uh, executive session for matters of uh, legal concerns tonight. So I just want to acknowledge that before we do our board report so that you're aware. Sometimes that helps us um, knowing how to and what to share during our uh, board member reports. And um, also just as a reminder in terms of board reports or an opportunity for us as board directors to uh, let the community know the things that we've been involved in that uh, that are of a uh, direct uh, activities because of the fact that we're um, investing in education in our community. And so, you know, one of the things that I wanted to acknowledge tonight um, for my board member report is that I just think it's uh, literally fantastic uh, when I saw the open doors ceremony for graduation, very meaningful. The students um, were just very inspiring to be able to uh, see them make the progress that they have. And it was also very uh, inspiring to me as, as well to know that our school district is investing so well. So I just want to say to you, Superintendent Banner, what an amazing job Open Doors has been. And our hats and respect go off to your team there for sure. Very well done. I'd also like to acknowledge that, uh, and I'm just trying to be ob objective and accurate. That's what, those things are very important to me. But Anthony, that was, that was the best uh, graduation speech I've ever heard uh, in graduations. It was so meaningful. I, I was so charged up that I actually went online and signed up for school again, because I just want to graduate one more time to be able to get to have somebody speak like that. So that's not true, Anthony, but your speech was so powerful. It was amazing. And so just, Anthony, thank you that you bring that uh, to our district. Thank you very much. Carol, I wanted to say, you know, because Ron and I talked about this 25 years and then the fact that you joined the board when you were only 25, you've done so much in your 50 years of life. Thank you so much, Carol, for it's that. It's been easy. Yeah. <laughs> you carry it so well. It hasn't aged you a bit. It's just. You're wrong. Hard. I wasn't gray haired then. I know that for a fact. You're lying now. <laughs> but Carol, so few people have served at that level. And even as evidence tonight, you know what you're talking about. Not only that, but you genuinely care about our students. So thank you for being that kind of a person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to acknowledge how exciting it is for me to have Alyssa uh, to have run the meeting. I, I'm loving getting to share some of the responsibilities with her. She's obviously uh, a sharp young 
um, protege, Alyssa, you are just so natural and at ease, but thank you for uh, stepping up and expanding your roles of leadership as vice president. And I look forward to finding, you know, more and more ways that I uh, get to delegate and see you continue to uh, just excel in leadership. It's remarkable, very well done. Good job. It was a good job. And um, then I also want to acknowledge that uh, Paul contacted me earlier and I, forgive me because it's sometimes I have a hard time remembering what days what with all the things that go on in our life. But it was uh, in connection with his meetings as um, a member of the board of WASDA. And Paul, your reports are very helpful. And I appreciate the work, the extra work that you do uh, for WASDA in, in that capacity as well. So this is a board that does work hard and I'm uh, appreciative of each one of you. And I just want to acknowledge that. I also wanted to make reference tonight of our meeting with the city council. And I think that that was uh, again, very collaborative. And so in, uh, I've already had a meeting with Ron and we're gonna discuss it further uh, tomorrow. And then I'll, I'll have a report for the rest of you as a board, but we are very much interested in looking at ways to be collaborative, of course, and to uh, even expand opportunities around equity while making sure that, you know, of course, that we have the capacity for it. Uh, our board has seen our very aggressive timeline of the things that we're moving forward with equity in our own district. And so we'll wanna find ways where that does overlay and, and hopefully not only enhance what we can do with the city, but enhance equity for all of our students in our community as well. So we're excited to look at that. And I know that Ron and his team will have some specifics that he can bring out for that. So we're grateful. and. The reason that the city wants to do things with us, again, Ron, I'm just bragging on our district because of the fact that, you know, they're getting ready, if I understood it correctly, uh, to hire an EDI specialist like uh, what we have. And they'll come on, I believe they said in June, but please don't hold me accountable to that. And um, we've had the benefit of uh, Grant Twyman at work and so your insight there and your encouragement to move forward with that position obviously uh, enabled us to move ahead in our journey at a rate that was very valuable to us. And so we give you our, our, uh, our thanks, Ron, for being forward thinking and hitting uh, the ground running in terms of doing uh, what was needed to make sure that we put on the lens of equity as we move our district forward. So thank you for that. I just want to acknowledge it. And then uh, again, um, we have uh, an opportunity to um, appreciate the difficulty and the complexity of hybrid, of virtual learning, and manning the whole thing. And so, Ron, I can't. Eat, I I just literally don't even know all the nuances and the layers of what our staff is working through. I know parents thought this, think that, change their mind, yet we have to build capacity. I know it's got to be incredibly difficult, and yet here we are getting kids back in the classroom. And here we are doing everything we can to make sure that our staff are safe. Here we are doing everything we can <clears throat> to try to make sure teachers get vaccinated. We're still doing all this work behind the scenes. And in the meantime, kids get to come and see one another, learn together. And so thank you so much for that. I know how difficult it must be. So again, thanks. So I don't often start. Uh, in fact, I often even don't even do my board report, but I wanna make sure that I share those things tonight. Are there any other board members that would like to report? You're not required to, but if you wanna share some of the things, Alyssa, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say the joint council or school board council meeting probably was the best um, joint meeting to date. Um, I feel like everyone is on the, you know, the city of Lakewood and the school district are on the very similar journeys of what they're trying to accomplish. It obviously um, applies a little bit different, but at the end of the day, 
the students in our school district are the city of Lakewood's community members. So it's, you know, everyone trying to work together. And um, I, I think that we'll move forward a lot faster if we can, we can work together and pull our resources. And then Carol, congratulations on 25 years. <laughs> I will say I was a whopping six years old. <laughs> yes. <Stop it. laughs> so I cannot no, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yesterday there was a big football game on. The old quarterback was there a long time. The new yeah. quarterback was only five years old. The <laughs> old quarterback they were, yeah. started, so. Touche, Carol. Very well done. Yeah. Hey, in, in this scenario, you're Tom Brady and he won. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any pretty rings, though. Whatever. That being said. Go ahead, Carol. Share your report report. First of all, let me say when you were talking 25 years, it was like, who, who? Never in a hundred years or a court did I ever think I would be doing something um, that I doing this job for 25 years never and um it's been it's been so fast yet some days a little slower but um i i just hope that um i hope that i've made a difference as much as as much as i hope people know how much i appreciate being able to serve that's being able to serve is is just i'm so grateful for that opportunity um 25 years i can't and i did not have this here when i started but anyway um, two things. One, it's wonderful to see the buses rolling. I mean, it just makes me happy. And like I tell my grandson, those are my buses. And he was pretty excited to see my buses on the road. Um, my grandkids are not back in school. And today I did have the opportunity to go pick up his homework. And, you know, I appreciate what the schools are doing to make sure those, for those families who want to be back in school, they have that opportunity. For those families who are saying, no, not yet, they don't miss a beat. And there's not like, oh, why not? It's just they're treating every kid um, equally and fairly, no matter what the parents' choices are. So I really appreciate that effort. And um, I know it's a huge Herculean task. And our teachers have met it and surpassed it. Teachers in district have met it and surpassed beyond what anybody I think ever thought that they would. Um, I wanted to just like to make one address on open doors. Quite frankly, one of my neighbors has one of those graduation signs from open doors in their, in their front yard. Placed so proudly with their son in front taking pictures, just warmed my heart. I so appreciate a district saying that every child, each child is a value, is important and can do it. And we make sure that we offer an opportunity for every kid, for every child, every student, to be a Clover Park School graduate. When, his, when he started the program, his father says, yeah, but I want him to have a high school diploma, not a some other diploma. And I, oh no, he will, he will have a high school diploma. That family is, and I know them, that family is so grateful for the opportunity that this district took. And they said to his son, here, we think you'll fit well to this program. And he excelled in that program. Ron, thank you from that family and from my neighbors for making sure that every child has an opportunity. And I love graduation. Pomp and circumstance in January was great. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Paul, you had your hand up. Do you still want to do a board report? Thank you. Um, I, I, I appreciate all the comments that from Marty and Carol and everyone on Open Doors. Um, I, I totally concur with all those, so I won't say any more other than that, that uh, you know, men mentioned the principal, Vanessa, she's, she's just done a tremendous job and is a real spark plug over there. And I just appreciate what they're doing. Um, Anisha. The, the, um, a a along with the WASDA thing, and, and I don't know if I got this passed to Ron or you or not, uh, the, there's legislation going on uh, that's going to change the lead content in water uh, to more restrictive than what the water district has for school districts, um, which could be a problem for us. Um, I still need to call Randy Black over at the water district and see, you know, what his feeling is on that and whether that's going to get signed into rules. But it, 15 parts per million is what the, the city water system is required to do. 
and it looks like the legislature may make schools go down to 10 or 5 parts per million, which is pretty restrictive. So it's just something to put on the skyline for us that could be a, you know, co it could cost us some money um, if, if it gets passed. What's that bill, Paul? Can I interrupt you? Can you? What's the name? What's that I, bill I, number? I'm Ron. I am so sorry. I don't remember the bill okay. number, but I'll okay. I'll research it and find out. And uh, but it's it's one of those ones that could sneak up and and and, and I don't. I'm on it. But, but Randy Black can tell us what what the the science is behind this thing and why the legislature is going crazy down there, or somebody is, you know. Okay, and and the last thing is. Um, it, it was interesting. The comments I made on uh, December 14th um, created lots of attention in nationally. And uh, so people have reached out to me from all over the place. And one of the things that was re I was called today and said, Paul, we got money. I said, really? What, what does that mean? He said, well, they, they have a diversity problem in our nation. And, and it's not a racial problem diversity issue. It's a diversity of what state you come from. Um, the man told me, he said, you know, Paul, I got all kinds of money, but I don't have students. And so they're looking for students from eighth grade through 11th grade, not looking for seniors, eighth through 11th grade with their parents that are interested in getting a full ride scholarship. It's, it's not promised a full ride, but he shared with me that, um, the way money is divided up at these universities is um, big corporations give money to schools, uh, colleges, universities that um, have students from all across the country. And if they don't, then they don't get the money. So one of the places it's hard to recruit people out of a students out of the state of Washington which was interesting to me. He said, so right now, he said, I'm looking for students. I have a boatload of money. And so we just have to figure out a way to link up with them. Um, these universities aren't the ones that have the major football teams, but it's, think of universities like Harvey Mudd and some of those um, that people don't even know about. They're, they're, where the, they're the creme de la creme schools and they're looking for students and um, and more of them are on the East Coast. So the, the hard thing for parents is to send your children to the East Coast to go to school. But if all you had to pay, if all you had to pay was the transportation to get them there and to get them home for Christmas um, and everything else is paid for, that's a pretty sweet deal. And uh, so I don't know what the best way, maybe Ron, you can help me out, figure out how to contact parents or how the best way to put this information out. But um, we can link these people up and they could have an opportunity to get their children's education paid for. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And then Anthony, did you want to share a board report tonight before we go to executive session? Uh, <clears throat> just just pretty minor, just echoing pretty much uh, what was said. Um, I can really, really appreciate the opportunity of open doors um, and, and just having that there so students can can have that flexibility and and still maintain the life that that they have going on and, and continue through school and and make that happen that is just amazing so it was an honor to be a part of that situation and to be uh, there to present and you know i just l looking at our board and the things that we're doing here it, it's just amazing and, and I know we, we are making those uh, strides uh, for, for success and, and for the benefit of the community and, and just looking at the, the children in, in whole. So it's wonderful. It's great to see uh, Carol, you know, being a part of the board for, for 25 years and uh, ju just seeing that her determination and, and she doesn't have a second agenda. It, it is for the students, it's for the community, you know, and that's, that's so powerful. Um, and, and of course, for, for you too, Marty, you know, to, to represent, um, it's an amazing thing. Um, you, you've been a great president, board president, and the way that you've led has been very powerful. So, um, Thank you. yeah, just, just on the board alone, you know, it's exciting to have uh, Alyssa becoming the vice or uh, the president as well. Um, so that's, that's wonderful too. So, 
So that's a. Uh, I'm, I'm getting kicked off pretty soon. I can feel it coming. Unless it's just going to mow me over, it's going to be awesome. I, I just it have is. to say, how how old were you? Yeah, I, I yeah, I was 25 as well. You don't you remember? You and I were both 25. But remember, but the old man hit, won yesterday. So hitting 40 has been pretty hard on me, but I'm carrying it as best I can. So. Okay, amazing uh, community. We're going to go ahead and move into executive session. Ron, I'm assuming we're still having executive session. All right, so we will move into executive Give session. Give me a Amato. few minutes. I have to go to another room. So, yeah, we'll do, uh, we'll come back at Sorry, you can't come walking 8 p.m., 20, 20 to 25 minutes, because we'll give you a, a five minute bio break as well. Boy. Okay, thanks. All right. Go back to the bedroom, right? You can sit out here if you want. I can go upstairs. Whatever you want to do. Oh, it's home upstairs. Well, it's not that cold. I was up there after this afternoon. If you want to go back to bed and sit, don't be at the bed. Yeah.
I make a motion that we adjourn. Second, I'm in. We are now all back. And so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. It was made by Paul Wegeman and seconded by Carol Jacobs. If you are in agreement, would you please uh, raise your right hand and we will adjourn at 7.55 p.m. unanimously. Thank you very much, board. Thank you, district, for your hard work. We appreciate each and every one of you. Good night.